here in New York City. Um, and uh, let's see if this controller works. This fantastic city. I, I uh, lived there for 20 years now and operating, doing a lot of projects around the city uh, and now getting more and more involved with the infrastructure of the city itself. Um, and it's just a massive city here, as you see, 22.5 million people in the immediate area. Uh, if uh, New York was a country, it would be 12th largest GDP in the world. Uh, some figures here is uh, 1 billion gallons of water a day. Uh, we have over 2,000 bridges and uh, 500 rail stations and uh, over 6,000 miles of roads. And, uh, you know, just to, it is not only by people a melting pot, but, uh, you know, doing infrastructure work in New York City. It's, you're involved with all this legacy, a lot of history, a lot of different ways of doing things, and how do you upgrade a city into the 21st century? Uh, I work for a company that we do uh, consulting for pretty much every agency in New York City. And, uh, you know, we, we formed uh, this technology group seven years ago, and uh, with the intent, how can we disrupt the industry and actually make projects work much better? Because you're always short on money, and I think, especially in these legacy organizations, uh, the technology seems to be behind. And I'd like to, to show a study uh, done by the McKinsey organization. This looks at from 1991, which happens to be pretty much the, around the time where the internet broke through. Um, and the adoption of the internet has, as we know, taken off, and I would say it's obviously full adoption now, and technology is getting faster and faster. And how has that in affected society and industry? And if you look at industry and fast forwarding from 1991 to 2015, uh, it has evolved, right? So you see the curve here. This is the average industry in the United States, and it's, uh, what is it, 40, 48% more efficiency now than it was in 1991. So if you look at the building industry, specifically the, the infrastructure industry, how has that curve gone? And if you look, it, it's almost like a mirror image. So instead of improving, it, it has becoming less effective. So according to McKinsey, it's 26% less efficient now than it was in 1991. And why is that? Now we have so much more technology. We, you know, we can connect, communicate, and, and visualize things so much better. But by some reason, that hasn't translated into the infrastructure world. And I think that's about to change. Uh, to me, that's what makes me excited. Uh, you know, the difference between an industry that was on par in 1991, it's 100% potential improvement there. Uh, and I think that's doable. And I think technology can serve as the sort of force to pull all this together. Because I think one of the reasons uh, infrastructure is lagging, there's much more regulation, uh, but it's still operating in a very fragmented way. So information is not traveling across different projects. Uh, so we're, we're looking really to disrupt the infrastructure. And that's you know, in design uh, for planning construction and operation. And we really took, take a holistic look of, you know, all stages needs to be integrated, not only within design and construction, but also across them. And technology, you can do this, but, you know, moving away from a paper-based way of doing things, because that's really how it still is done in many aspects. Uh, we're dealing with agencies throughout the whole city, you know, uh, MTA, the big metro, Metropolitan Transit Authority, uh, New York uh, uh, DOT, Department of Transportation, that deals with all the roads, uh, the Housing Authority, which provides public housing, uh, DDC, that really, the Department of Design and Construction, that really uh, manages all the police station, all the public buildings in New York, the Power Authority, dealing with the power, and uh, educational facilities like CUNY. Um, and we see a similar trend there that they are still operating in the 20th century. So how do we bring that forward? Uh, we found 
as we're dealing with all these agencies, we've been working for seven years really digitizing all our projects, and we found there are common threads in all of them. And uh, I think the last couple of years, we realized that technology is no longer a barrier. There's no scale limit anymore of the size of projects. Uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, as an example uh, using the Eastside Access project, uh, which is a gigantic new train station underneath Grand Central Station. Uh, the approximate budget now is $12 billion. It's been going on since the 1990s. Uh, if you see here on the blue, you see two dots there in the, in the sort of backgrounds. This is the cavern of the main station. It's enormous. And it, this is dug underneath uh, Manhattan. And no one knows about this project, really. Uh, so if you remember these two little guys you can see there uh, on the blue picture, uh, they're standing in the cavern there uh, to the right. And it connects to what's called the Madison Yards. It's eight city blocks that takes you from Grand Central Station down into this train station itself. And this is just a small portion of the overall project. So in the next slide here, you see the little red dot there. That's, uh, that's that picture you looked at. So it spans over six miles and connects to the biggest in, uh, uh, railway intersection in the United States. And we have modeled the whole project in, in very high detail uh, there. Uh, and what's interesting with this is that it's not a BIM project to start with. So we, we, we got involved midstream and we've been able to model the whole project, rewrite the codes for the, all the upcoming projects. So now all the contractors are actually using it for, for modeling purposes. Um, and let's see, we were very pleased that yesterday we got awarded the second prize excellence award for infrastructure. And uh, we're really proud about that, especially that it was not a BIM project to start with, that we've been able to sort of catch up and, and change how things are done on this ongoing project. And it's been a challenge, but it's only by showing the ways, uh, uh, showing that it can be done, and now it's, it's really gotten traction. And we, we realized there, there's the way, uh, uh, there's an opportunity here, because still, even with BIM and things like that, the deliverables are still this kind of paper drawings. So we're developing something we call interactive drawing or interactive documentation, where we bring all the new technologies together uh, from you know, scanning, reality capture. So we're using drones for all the outdoor works. We fly every week on our projects and capture generating use of uh, photogrammetry the live picture of the site. So we link that back to the models and we can do, use that information for progress tracking. Um, we, this example I'm showing here is the, uh, the Ghostbuster uh, fire station that was used for the first Ghostbuster movie. We went in and scanned that, spent three hours, linked it back to our modeling software, generated plans, ceilings, uh, plans, sections, and so forth. It took us one hour, so four hours we had a drawing set that was good to start really evaluating what needs to be done to the station. These kind of things are, it used to take maybe a week to do this. So it's a complete disruption in capturing information. Uh, we're also playing around with HoloLens. So we took that scan, ported it into HoloLens, so we, we can actually walk through the project. So in our office, we have a big empty space that we use sort of as a holodeck. So we can load any of our projects, because we scan all our projects now. And we port it this way. And it, it's, it's phenomenal to be able to put on these glasses and actually experience the projects firsthand. Um, um, and another thing we're doing uh, using this Matterport photographic scanner that is a web-based platform. Uh, we are overlaying models using HoloLens over the existing conditions out in the sites. Uh, we are also modeling extremely detailed models and placing them in the city. So we have a city model created, so every project pops into the city model. And it really feeds that concept, like why isn't the whole city have standards regarding these things? Because uh, it opens up all kinds of possibility of simulation. Uh, we do using these models, porting them into game engines, and uh, 
doing facing studies, and it, it, it's really no limit to what, what you can do with this stuff. And the turnaround time is so quick. Um, so we, we're now modeling all the different bridges and tunnels in New York and creating this sort of central model that we can quickly turn it into game engines for visualization uh, and also coding the models in, 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 in quite detail. Um, it could be a simple thing, like this was an electrical panel that we wanted to look. And we're working right now with Autodesk with the Fusion platform. We're very, very excited. That's really the future, this cloud-based way of collaborating. Um, then looking at uh, you know, the, our pilot project, we actually have it on exhibit, in the exhibit hall. I, I really recommend you to come and see that. Um, here, again, shooting it to the game engine, but it's, it's the data that's underlying that we're really, really interested in. But this illustrates pretty well that there's a new electrical panel here for the, 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 the racing arm for the, this, this bridge that was built in 1936. And we, we slap on QR codes onto the, every piece of equipment. And the coding is done automatically uh, in our BIM model. It detects where a piece is, and it calls all the assets. And we're talking about tens of thousands of assets that typically were done manually typing in, and you have tons of errors that way. This way, it's all done automatically, leveraging automation. And then automatically, we generate drawing sets. So it's dynamic drawings. Um, so here is a couple of examples of that. We can have color coding based on inspections. So it's like we, we can issue these drawing sets on an ongoing basis basis and they're always the latest. So we call it current condition documentation. So that's what's happening right now there. And we, we create an, so the drawings are becoming more like a website. You can click and we realize like we can do within four clicks, you can reach any piece of information in your whole project. You don't need any BIM or Revit training for this. You also just need to know how to click. And that's really what's important because a lot of people in these facilities, to train them using 3D models and things like that is not realistic. But they, they are used to drawing sets. So we could even print this out if they wanted to. But you know, we prefer using you know, the interactive model with a tablet or, or some sort of interface where so you can click. We even have a home button on the lower right on the title block. So you can click and that takes you back to the, to the title sheet. So you're navigating in a much more intuitive fashion these drawing sets. Um, so uh, and leveraging automation. So we automatically create all these drawings. It's, it's, it's actually a couple of thousand of drawings because they need to describe every single joint for inspections. But we can, again, do this automatically. And, and they tend, used to do this by hand, draw every drawing by hand. And uh, we realized like for them to draw one bridge, every single joint, for the same amount of money that costs, we can model every single facility, these nine bridges and tunnels, and generate these automatically. So it's so much cheaper to do it the way we're doing it. It takes a little time to, to get there, but it's, it's, we're there now, and, and uh, it, it's, it's really the last couple of years the technology has gone fast enough to, for us to really generate this. But automation, machine learning, reality capture, virtual reality, augmented reality is sort of connecting all those things together. That's when the magic really starts happening. So, um, so that's what, what we're doing in New York City.